And now, Six Sports presents the Dean Trailways Fifth Quarter. We officially have surpassed the halfway point of the high school football season as week five kicked off tonight. Thanks for tuning in to the Dean Trailways fifth quarter. I'm Ian Kress. And I'm Haley Schongard. We'll get to the high school football action in just a second <laughs> because there was a very important game at Comerica Park tonight in Detroit. Oh, yes, there was. The Detroit Tigers were taking on the Chicago White Sox and a win would give the Tigers their first postseason appearance since 2014. The game was scoreless in the fifth inning. Then a pass ball allows Jake Rogers to cross the plate. It was the first of two runs the Tigers scored in the inning. Then in the seventh, it was a 2-1 game, and Riley Green is going to give one a ride to center field. Nearly a three-run Jimmy Jack, but an RBI double will do the trick just fine to extend the Tigers' lead. A sellout crowd was on hand tonight at Comerica Park, and the biggest roar came in the bottom of the ninth. Jason Foley is going to get the fly out to end the game. The Tigers get it done 4-1 over the White Sox to clinch their first postseason appearance since 2014. And what a moment it was down in Motown tonight. Super yeah, exciting. That was fun. <laughs> well, if you like offense, then DeWitt's football team is the team for you as the Panthers are averaging 64 points a game this season. Crazy. The Panthers <laughs> met another high-powered offense tonight in the East Lansing Trojans. So obviously, duh, that had to be <laughs> our big game. Hart Tyler Driesinga was on the sidelines and joins us now after another high-scoring night. Hey, Tyler. Hey guys, these two teams have been two of the powerhouses in our area in recent years. And get this, East Lansing and DeWitt had met 12 times prior to tonight, and each team won six of those meetings. Not to mention, DeWitt's Rob Zimmerman and East Lansing's Bill Ferraco have been the head coaches for all 12 meetings dating back to 2007. So these are two programs that are very familiar with each other. We pick up the action late in the second quarter, East Lansing. Looking to cut into a 28-14 deficit, but the Trojans' pass to the sidelines is picked off by DeWitt's Miller wing. Third quarter, East Lansing running back Jace Clarizio bounces it to the outside. He gets hit at the one-yard line, but fights through it for the touchdown. Trojans down just seven. But DeWitt answers right back. It's that Larner connection. Quarterback Elliott Larner finds his brother Abram Larner on the sideline. He does the rest. He makes two nice moves on one sideline then breaks all the way across the field to the other sideline and dives for the pylon touchdown Panthers to put them up 35-21. On the next EL possession, Duarte Sams Jr. gets outside and he turns on the burners up the sideline and in to cut it back to a one score game as neither team punted in the third quarter. After another DeWitt touchdown, East Lansing has it again. Ben Fletcher takes to the air this time and connects with a wide open B.J. Windham for another Trojan touchdown. It's a 42 to 35 game DeWitt in front. Just a minute to go in the game now. Same score. Both teams out of timeouts. DeWitt facing a fourth and one. The Trojans stuff it and get the ball back with a chance to tie the game. They drive all the way to the 12 yard line in a blink. But on fourth down, Fletcher heaves it to the end zone. It falls incomplete and DeWitt hangs on. The Panthers beat East Lansing. 42 to 35, their second straight one possession win. I just commend our kids. I mean, we've had back to back just absolute battles, and for us to come out on top of both of them says an awful lot about the character of these guys, especially as young as we are. We certainly didn't play great tonight on defense, but it does say that they dug down when they needed to, you know, and we're getting better. Obviously, Sansing's got a lot of weapons too. In the last two weeks, we played two just tremendous teams uh, offensively, so we're getting better. I mean, I expect our performance to continue to improve defensively as well. As for another team in the CAAC Blue looking to remain perfect, Lansing Everett was on the road tonight taking on Grand Blank, who had Olympic bronze medal winner Grant Fisher in the house. Game was tied at 7 in the second quarter, then Grand Blank's Jeremiah Coleman runs it in to give the Bobcats the lead, but Everett wasn't backing down on the road. Backed up on their one-yard line. Najee Davidson is going to let it fly, and it falls into the arms of Eugene Allen for a big pickup of 43 yards. Later in the drive, Davidson shows off the arm once again, and logic like 
Iola comes down with it for a Vikings touchdown to tie up the game. However, it would be Grand Blank sailing to a 35-21 win over Everett. Well, moving over to the CAAC White now, even with losing one of its biggest playmakers in Caden Thalen to graduation last year, Portland's offense hasn't missed a beat thus far. The Raiders have scored at least 26 or more points through their first four games. They took the track into Lansing tonight for a meeting with Lansing Catholic. Yeah, Portland came in undefeated and led 21-0 at halftime, but behind two passing touchdowns from quarterback Dominic Navarra, and it was two of just three passes the Raiders threw this entire game. If you know Portland, Portland. You know they like to run the football mm -hmm. junior running back. Caden Dickerson breaks loose for a big time gain and shortly after Dickerson is going to weave his way through the defense once again for his third touchdown of the night. How about that? Lansing Catholic would get on the board in the third quarter as senior Braden Rabideau is going to turn on his speed boost and get into the end zone for six points. Fourth quarter now. Take a wild guess what Portland decides to do near the goal line. Yep, they're going to run it this time. Of course. Barrett Brennan powers his way into the end zone as Portland takes down Lansing Catholic 35 to 14 thanks to a strong running attack. Yeah, you know, you think with my son being the quarterback, we'd throw more, but we're going to stay true to who we are and uh, uh, the kids have played really hard tonight. It just means everything to us. Uh, we went into this week, we knew they were going to be a tough team throwing the ball and we just wanted to uh, establish a run game and show them how Portland Raider football is. Moving right along, Lansing Sexton welcomed in Lakewood in the second. The J-Dubs had a two-score lead and added to it. Josiah Stewart says, huh, you know, I think I'm going to take this thing all the way myself. A lengthy run to the end zone increases Sexton's lead, and the defense came to play as well. Still in the second, Diamore Andrews comes up with the big-time sack. Ooh. Lansing Sexton wins 34-14 to the final. We've got to take our first time out of the night, but when we come back, we're heading out to Pirate Country where PW was looking to stay perfect on the season. Plus, we've got a full slate of CAAC Red games on deck. All this and more when the Dean Trailways fifth quarter returns. Look for the U.S. Army Fan Zone each week at the Six Sports Game of the Week. Try your skill at games, win great prizes, and more. What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover. To redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do. It means getting people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be. Rape, incest, some of the most heinous crimes. We expect our leaders to protect victims, but Kathy Schmaltz let them down, voting to keep an abortion ban. It could even put women in jail. We just can't trust Kathy Schmaltz. At Advanced Audiology, we assess your hearing and create customized solutions. Let our doctors of audiology conduct your hearing assessment and provide the professional guidance you need. Hearing starts here at Advanced Audiology. 100%. Tom Barrett says he supports banning abortion 100%. No exceptions for rape, incest, or to save a woman's life. He wrote a bill to make abortion a crime and put women and doctors in prison. Now Tom Barrett wants to pass a national ban, overruling Michigan's constitution, because he said, I know I'm right. Tom Barrett's 100% abortion ban is too extreme. DCCC is responsible for the content of this ad. Michigan's strongest metal roof and the industry's best warranty can now be yours for up to $7,500 in savings. This month, save big on a beautiful, energy-efficient, lifetime-guaranteed metal roof from American Metal Roofs. Not only will you save, but your American Metal Snow Country roof will be expertly installed by trained craftsmen and will thrive in Michigan's harshest weather. Don't wait. Call 844-METAL-ROOFS now and lock in installation for 2024. Visit AmericanMetalRoofs.com for more details. We all know what happens when politicians take their eye off the ball from threats abroad. We lose Michigan jobs and we're less safe. I'm Melissa Slotkin. I've spent my life protecting our country and I'll never shy away from threats coming from places like China. It's why I've written bills blocking the Chinese government from buying Michigan farmland and buying our factories. I've done legislation to block that too. I approve this message 
because I'll never allow Michigan's economic security to be outsourced to anyone. You're my new extra reliable, super fast internet. Stream a movie. Order us a pizza. Wow, good internet. For a limited time, get internet one gig for just 55 bucks a month with auto pay and paperless billing. Extremist Andy Shaver is hell-bent on ending reproductive rights. Abortion is a manifestation of Satan himself. Shaver's plan would criminalize abortion even after rape and incest. There's a special place for Andy Shaver. Welcome back. Year after year, Puwama Westphalia is always near the top of the table in the CMAC standings. This year's no different. The unbeaten Pirates had a meeting with conference foe Potterville tonight. We jump right to the action. PW already up and continues to add to it. This time, quarterback Luke Nuremberg shows off the legs on the QB keeper, which helps the Pirates sail to a 20 to nothing lead. Still in the first, another Pirate shows off his speed. Brayton Thalen hits the outside and finishes through contact at the goal line, extending PW's lead. Nuremberg made sure to show off his arm tonight as well. He connects with Brandon Anthony here. Then with under 19 seconds in the first, Nuremberg is going to find Carter Worth. The Pirates win big tonight. They defeat Potterville 78 to nothing on the road. As for PW's rival Fowler, they defeated Dansville 57 nothing tonight, and those two are going to meet next week. Well, going over to Mason for individuals were and a team were enshrined into the Mason Athletics Hall of Fame tonight. It was also Military Appreciation Night as Mason met Lansing Eastern. Hey, this was really, really yeah, cool. Check out the flyover Mason had pregame. The Bulldogs also donned their American flag jerseys tonight. By the time our cameras got there, Mason was rolling. Still in the first, quarterback Kaysen Carswell finds Troy Peters. He hits the outside and comes right into your living room. Mason extends its lead 43 to zip. Now that duo continued showing off in the second. Carswell hits the airways this time, dialing up a bomb to Peters, and there was nothing but green grass in front of him. Peters had two receptions for 104 yards and two scores, while Carswell had four touchdowns tonight. Mason wins 58 to zero the final. Staying in the CAAC red, if we're showing a train near the field, then that means our next stop is Williamston, who is hosting undefeated St. John's tonight. First quarter, this was the Brandon Showmiss show. The senior running back is going to dive in to put the Red Wings up 14-0 in the first quarter. Then on the first play of the second quarter, St. John's would go for it on fourth down, and Showmiss is going to dive into the end zone for another touchdown, making it 21-zip, which would call for that Heisman pose. Yep, there it is. So with Williamson, looking for a spark offensively. Steve Kirsten and his staff would get a little tricky with it. Thomas Pratt gets the ball in the end around and is going to throw it deep to a wide open. Miles Keener down the sideline for a big time gain. And on the very next play, Caleb Nielsen is going to throw a dime to the end zone and Pratt hauls it in to get the Hornets on the board. But St. John's was not going to be denied tonight. Nolan Kenishnek would add three more points to the lead. The Red Wings take down Williamston 45-20 21 and will now get ready for a home game next week against Mason. Should be a good one. In Hazlitt, the Vikings hosting Fowlerville. Both teams looking for their second win of the year. First possession, Fowlerville punting. The snap gets away. The Gladiators just surrender the safety instead of giving up a touchdown. On Hazlitt's next drive, Eric Lardy airs it out to Dontrell Dennis, and he walks in for the touchdown and even gives our camera a little point. How thoughtful of him. Later in the first quarter, Hazlitt knocking on the door again, and Corey Amakri punches it in. He fumbles at the goal line, but they say he crossed. Hazlitt wins big tonight, 44-7, to the final. Well, it's time for our final timeout of the night, and when we come back, we have a great matchup on deck. Yeah, we've got a battle of the unbeaten. Who doesn't love that? While Manchester and Leslie faced off, we'll have those highlights next. Plus, Mark D'Antonio is getting inducted into the MSU Ring of Honor tomorrow. We're going to hear from him next in the fifth quarter. The Dean Trailways fifth quarter is sponsored by Dean Trailways of Michigan. Call it a sense of purpose, a higher calling. At Dean Transportation, we call it our passion. It's simply who we are. 60 years of pioneering the best health and safety standards because safe student transportation is essential. We are hardworking folks, connecting children to learning, schools to our communities, and you to a better career. 
Want to make mid-Michigan a better place? We'll put you in the driver's seat. Join the Dean family today and help to connect our kids to brighter futures. Kamala supports taxpayer-funded sex changes for prisoners. Surgery. Um, for prisoners. For prisoners. Every transgender inmate in the prison system would have access. It's hard to believe, but it's true. Even the liberal media was shocked Kamala supports taxpayer-funded sex changes for prisoners and illegal aliens. Every transgender inmate would have access. Kamala's for they, them. President Trump is for you. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. You're hearing a lot of big promises right now. One company is delivering on them. Wall side windows. Get our biggest offer ever. 80 months, no interest. Plus half off every window. 80 years, 80 months, no interest. You can save literally thousands while improving the value and comfort of your home. Buy direct, save big, and then enjoy up to 80 months, no interest, no down payment. Limited time, wall side. Get in the fast lane on the highway to winning. It's the $250,000 Road to Riches at Gun Lake Casino. On September 14th and 28th, six winners drive home a Ford Escape, Bronco, or F-150 guaranteed. Get in the fast lane on the highway to winning. It's the $250,000 Road to Riches, only at Gun Lake Casino. Come to play. News Nation tomorrow. You have a missing show inspired by Gabby. How do you say thank you for that? Three years, 150 cases, keeping hope alive. Marnie Hughes hosts Missing, a News Nation special, tomorrow at 9, 8 central. Tuesday, Tim Walls and J.D. Vance face off in the CBS vice presidential debate simulcast. Then trust the only political team who will break it down from all sides. Debate night in America, Tuesday at 7, 6 central on News Nation. Welcome back. We had a handful of unbeaten matchups tonight, and the Cascades Conference featured one of them. 4-0 Leslie welcomed in 4-0 Manchester, so who's O was going <laughs> to go? It was homecoming tonight, so we are sending our congratulations to the homecoming king and queen. Y'all looked beautiful. Leslie had a 16-point lead to start the third. A big reason was some stout defense. Sophomore Jackson Fawcett picks up the big-time tackle for loss. The Flying Dutchman, though, they would settle in still in the third and down by 10. Quarterback Jackson Walls hands it off to Jaden Johnson. See ya. He's so Peace. fast our camera could barely keep up. It's now a four-point game after that, but no need to fear, Blackhawks fans. Jaden Colby is here in the fourth. He fakes the handoff, eludes every defender, and prances his way into the end zone. Does that not give you, like, Lamar Jackson-esque vibes? I wonder why you would say that. Leslie wins 45-28 to and move to 5-0 and on the season. As for another perfect team thus far, Ovid Elsie was on the road tonight to take on Montrose. First quarter, Trice Tokar throws a perfect deep ball to Owen Long for the first points of the game. The Marauders kept their foot on the gas as the first quarter went along. This time, Tokar hands it off to Chase Faboos. He does the rest to make it 14-0 Ovid Elsie. They've scored 42 or more points in every game so far this year and kept that pace tonight. But let's give a shout out to the defense too. Jake Bowen comes up with a hard tackle at the line of scrimmage. Ovid Elsie wins big over Montrose, 42 to seven. Well, in just over under 24 hours, Michigan State's football team will be taking on number three, Ohio State at Spartan Stadium. And after the first quarter of the game, former MSU coach Mark D'Antonio will be inducted into the Ring of Honor. Yeah, D'Antonio is the all-time winningest football coach at Michigan State and will join Biggie Munn and Duffy Doherty as the only coaches inducted into MSU's Ring of Honor. D'Antonio was attending an event tonight at the Breslin Center, and he shared with us that this honor didn't happen by itself. I just uh, saw Coach Narduzzi over at the uh, catalog there. He was in for a couple of minutes. And I hope every one of these players that are here and everybody that really worked with us um, closely sees a little bit of their name up on that on that award. You know, because I think these are program awards. I think these are things that, that you don't get there without a lot of people. And kickoff is set for 7.30 yeah. tonight. We, of course, will be there. We'll also be in Ann Arbor. Tyler, will be there. Yeah, Michigan five straight home games. Yeah. <laughs> right. Thanks for tuning in.